Liam was never sick. He never even had so much as an ear infection. It was just on a gut feeling that I decided to take him to the doctor for a well visit. I knew they were at the doctor's office that afternoon. Um, evening comes around and they're still not home. And, you know, Gretchen, I tried to call her, couldn't get through, couldn't get, you know, anybody to answer the phone. And then at some point I get a phone call. And Gretchen's telling me that. <laughs> Liam had a large tumor in his abdomen. And around 11 o'clock at night, I met Liam's oncologist. He's two and a half. He's not supposed to have an oncologist. And that's what started the odyssey. More children die from cancer than every other disease that affects children combined. The number of children that get cancer is around 12 to 13,000 new diagnoses per year. It's the number one disease killer of children in the U.S. Number one. There are many childhood cancers where we've made no improvement in cure rates for two, two or three decades. And even if they are cured, they have horrific side effects from what we're doing now. Funding specific to the problem of childhood cancer is far, far too low. For every dollar that they spend on cancer as a whole in our country, only about three pennies of that dollar are dedicated to pediatric cancer research. I spend most of my time writing grants to try to get money rather than writing the research papers or in the laboratory doing the work. Science needs one thing to move forward and one thing only, and that is funding. We started Cookies initially because our son was still in the fight. One of the lead oncologists at Memorial came to the parents, a bunch of parents, and said, listen, if we can raise $2 million, we can create a new drug. It was actually the next generation of a treatment that Liam was receiving. So we held our first really large bake sale. In the initial great cookie bake-a-thon of 96,000 cookies, we raised over $420,000, which went directly towards helping to fund that antibody. That antibody, which children are receiving today, became available seven months after Liam lost his battle. He was six years, almost seven, when he passed away. You know, it's often said that Liam lost his battle or a child lost his battle, and, and I really dislike that term because we lost the battle. We lost the battle by not having the right therapies. Imagine being a parent and being told there's nothing else that the doctors can do. That's really where the research comes in. I think that's why this is so vitally important. So many times you feel like your back is up against the wall or there are no options, nothing. And that's what phase one trials represent. They represent hope. Since September of 2008, there have been over 5,000 events in all 50 states and 15 countries. People rolling up their sleeves and having bake sales or 5Ks or whatever it is that they want to do to help raise money are helping to move science forward. Through our partnership with the top five pediatric cancer centers, we support the development of new cutting-edge therapies that are made available to more than 20 hospitals nationwide. We also help make all phase one therapies available to more children at more centers by matching government funding. Cookies has granted over $5 million in research funding, and of the dozens of projects that Cookies has funded, seven of those have actually gone from the lab to the clinic and are now helping children in their fight against cancer. We still have a lot of work that needs to happen. One question I often hear is, 
Why do you stay involved? The primary reason why we continue to fight as hard as we fight and to do what we do is because I know I will see my son again. I know, I mean, I, I feel him every day. There's never a moment of any day that he's not with me. But I know that when I can actually hear his voice and to hug him and to kiss him and to tell him how much I love him, I know that the very first question he's gonna ask me is, Mommy, did you make it better for others? Because that would be his expectation. His expectation was that if we could do something, then we should do it. And that's what drives me forward. I have to. We have to.